Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with an intel report. This series takes the units of Command & Conquer rivals, loads them into a cannon, and fires them at the wall of ranked play to see which ones stick. If you find this video helpful or fun, please hit like, share it with your mates, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon, or joining the Gaming Galleon Discord server to chat about Command & Conquer rivals and these videos. Today's Intel report is one that I know a lot of you have been waiting on for a long time, and it's one that's become a little bit of a meme where I'm concerned. And yes, Jade, the special version of this will be out soon. The rest of you are going to have to wait and see what I mean by that. No spoilers. Today, at long last, we are looking at Nod Artillery. The Nod Artillery is a self-propelled artillery vehicle that fires high explosive shells at extreme range. Relatively low tech by Nod standards, the Nod Artillery is still extremely effective at shelling all manner of ground targets. Despite its less than threatening initial appearance, the Nod Artillery is a tech unit built from the Temple of Nod. It's relatively slow moving and fragile, and it needs to set up before it's able to do anything. If you're familiar with my videos on the GDI MLRS or the Nod Giga Cannon, then you're already familiar with where this is going. Once it's in position, Nod Artillery takes a few moments to set up, which you can see by it spreading its stabilizers and readying the cannon. From here, it can begin to reduce approaching enemy ground forces to smoking craters. There are a few key points that you absolutely must understand with Nod Artillery. Firstly, unlike the MLRS and Giga Cannon, Artillery has a range of three hexes, which is huge. This is actually further than the artillery can see, but it will not fire into fog of war, therefore you will need spotting units to get the best out of your artillery. Secondly, artillery shells deal splash damage. This means that everything on the tile will be hit. This means artillery will blast through squads quickly, and a well-placed shot can actually obliterate multiple units at once if they're moving through the same space. Suddenly, stacked pit bulls are not such a great idea. Thirdly, artillery will hold their rate of fire as long as they are firing within the narrow cone in front of them. To fire at targets outside of this cone, the artillery must rotate. Now, a canny opponent can use this to their advantage, drawing the artillery's attention away from any actual threats. Fourth, the artillery requires a little bit of micro to make work effectively. Once deployed, you may find it best to select the artillery's targets manually to avoid the aforementioned constant rotating away from what you actually want it to shoot at. Now, as with the MLRS and the Giga Cannon, artillery are also completely helpless against aircraft. Banshees, Mohawks and the like will cause your artillery a world of pain if they're not supported with anti-aircraft units. As such, you will want to keep something nearby to assist with aircraft threats. Whilst artillery themselves are surprisingly cheap, they are still temple units, meaning that the first one can be quite expensive to deploy, making artillery firmly a mid to late game unit at best. Despite their fragility, their range and destructive firepower mean that they are capable of dealing with the most ground threats if they are well supported. They are even capable of dealing with enemy tech like titans. Now, it should also be noted that artillery is also surprisingly effective against structures. Whether these be Kane's Obelisk, Strong Arms Turret, and even the enemy base, they all take a shocking amount of damage from artillery shells. When fighting against artillery, prevention is better than cure. As they are tech units, a well-executed aggro strategy can delay their construction until late game. But once they're out on the battlefield, your best bet is to catch them moving and to destroy them before they set up. Any anti-vehicle unit can do this, but swift moving ones like Scorpion tanks, stealth tanks, or jump jet troopers are going to be your best bet. If the artillery is already set up, then air units are your safest bet by far. Mohawks, Orcas, and Orca bombers work well for GDI, and Banshees, Laser Drones, and Infernos are good artillery removal units for Nod. That said, a cloaked stealth tank can swoop in under an artillery's radar, punch it in the face, and then retreat to safety. Now, if you're unfortunate enough to have no air units in your deck, when you face artillery, then you may struggle to remove them without heavy tech units like Rockworms or Titans. And let's be fair, who really runs Rockworms or Titans these days? Even using these units, you will need to get them to the artillery quickly. 
as their heavy damage can wreck units sent in one by one, you'll also want to send multiple attackers in at once. Just make sure you keep them spread out to avoid both units being hit by a single artillery shell. So now that artillery are actually useful again, you may decide that you want to run them. If so, what kind of decks do they fit into? Well, I have two suggestions for you. The first is a fun little variant of the 3-3 hand air deck. Militants and laser squads are your early units here, scouting the battlefield and dealing with most early threats cost effectively. Use these two units to keep your harvester safe and to secure and hold the pads early on. Remember, two defending militant squads will beat an attacking shockwave squad. Now once you find your infantry struggling, you need to move up into the air tower. Laser drones will deal with units like war dogs, cyber wheels, chem buggies and the like that your laser squads can struggle with. Venoms will rip through enemy shockwave and flame troopers, chemical warriors and snipers. Banshees will then deal nicely with any vehicle threats to come your way, especially if supported with laser squads or laser drones. These are also your main anti-air unit for anything that laser squads cannot handle. Finally, the Temple of Nod of course contains the artillery. The aim here is to have your artillery cover the pads with blanket fire whilst cheap units hold them. Banshees and laser squads protect your artillery from air units. Now the artillery is cheap enough that you shouldn't need to run two harvesters to make this deck work. A timely pop of the enemy harvester is usually enough to open the Temple of Nod and then artillery suddenly becomes quite affordable. Now the second suggestion is one that I've been running on ladder for a while and has become a popular option. And it's affectionately known as the Arty Party Deck. Yeah, by Kane, it's hard to take that seriously. Here, as before, militants and laser squads form your opening scouting units. You should know by now how to use them. Attack bikes help with light aircraft and light vehicles, and stealth tanks are here for enemy aircraft. Attack bikes help with light aircraft and light vehicles, and stealth tanks are here for heavy aircraft and heavy vehicles. Cyber wheels help you rinse enemy infantry that militants may struggle against whilst keeping your costs down. The artillery then rounds out this deck by dominating the ground. Use artillery to clear an area of ground for your cheap troops to advance and hold the pads, then use your stealth tanks to protect your artillery from anything that threatens to get too close. For both of these decks, you kind of have the option of Seth or Oksana for your commander. Oksana seems a natural choice as ultimately she allows you to quickly get your artillery set up and increase its fire rate, making it a terrifying threat. That said, Seth allows you to suddenly steal distant pads and bring up a flame trooper squad to deal with any infantry that just happened to get close enough to one of your artillery to be a problem. Finally, it's time to have a look at one of these decks in action with a featured replay. Let's jump right in! So in this particular replay, on the left hand side we have Zero Hour running a 3 Barracks 3 War Factory GDI deck, while Zerius is running the Agrotillery deck for Nod. And what the heck Zero Hour? Okay, this is either a player who has just mistapped where the Harvester should be, or is entirely too used to opening up against drone swarms. Zero, if you're watching this in the, in the comments below, please let me know, was that a mistap? What happened there? <laughs> but Zerius opens up with uh, militants, spots those war dogs and the curious, curious slingshot and brings out laser squads. Now, unfortunately, laser squads are a serious problem for Zero Hour, who now has to immediately tech into the uh, into the barracks in order to get out his own riflemen. It's not going to stop him though. Those riflemen are a great way of dealing with the laser squads, and the cyber wheels that Zerius has just moved into can be blocked nicely with the war dogs and the. <laughs> The random slingshot. I, I, I have no idea. But <laughs> Zero Hour is looping his troops around, keeping things nice and quick, moving around and just contesting, the, uh, keeping hold of the pads that he can do. Up comes a, fl uh, a drill pod to the left. It's not enough in time from Zerius. That first missile goes to Zero Hour and his incredible, uh, <laughs> incredible slingshot opener. Um, so the war dogs now come down to deal with those uh, those flame troopers and just hold that southern pad. Zerius is mo has moved into uh, into stealth tanks. It's, I think he's had enough of having to deal with war dogs and just wants to clear them in a single volley. It will deal with the pitbulls quite nicely. And if they get hold of that slingshot, which quite frankly, looking at Zerius' deck, that slingshot has nothing to do this entire game. A slingshot can only target air. There is no air to target. 
So we've just got a little bit of back and forth on the southern pads here. Zero Hour seems to be holding things quite nicely. Some cyber wheels come in, but there is a pit bull waiting. That said, the pit bull can see that there is a stealth tank hovering in the distance. That stealth tank is going to be problematic. A drill pod with more flame troopers causes a distraction on the south left. We have one, uh, one all with one contested. Suddenly, Zerius is taking that second pad in the south on the right-hand side and holding it. Can a war dog squad move across in time to contest? I, uh, they've turned around because they need to hold their own pad. No. Zero Hour loses the second missile. It is now one all and out comes that first artillery. Heavily wounded stealth tank body blocks for it long enough just to pull out that artillery, get it set up and start shelling things. The artillery already is two squads in. A stealth tank ready just to clear that bottom pad whilst the artillery moves into the northern pad's position. This uh, is a very bad situation now for Zero Hour. That, that top pad, as far as I'm concerned, now belongs to Zerius. And due to the nature of this map, it's actually going to be ridiculously hard to even contest the southern right pad because that artillery can just cover so much distance. And there we are, Zerius moving the stealth tank up to try and bait those uh, missile troopers into coming into the artillery's range. That artillery is just going to town. That top pad has not changed color. Those dogs are just utterly useless against the artillery. And <laughs> I think Zero has kind of given up at this point. He's just accepted that oh, this, this no harvester strategy started out well, started out really well, but it just cannot hold up to artillery, of which Zerius now has two. Two artillery on the field. It doesn't matter how fast those war dogs get through. Although that said, that said, it's gone blue, it's gone red again. Oh no, we are in the situation now where that bottom pad is being held by another artillery. Nothing in the world is going to stop this now. Nothing can get that close enough. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry, Zero Hour. This is painful to watch, but so satisfying. Well done, Zerius. Beautiful little replay there. Great use of the artillery.